Josh Waitzkin was the greatest American chess prodigy since Bobby Fischer. He became a national master at age 13 and an international master at age 16, which if you don't know, that's one step down from Grandmaster. But then this movie got released about his life called Searching for Bobby Fischer, and he got sick of chess because of all the media attention, so he stopped doing chess and started doing Tai Chi. Then in 2004, he became the world champion of Tai Chi Chuan push hands. So how did Waitzkin become world class at two completely separate skills that on the surface have nothing to do with one another? Well, the reason is because he's really, really good at learning. Once Waitzkin ran into Jim Harbaugh, who at the time was the quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts, and Harbaugh started talking about what it was like to be a quarterback and what it was like to try and become a better quarterback, and Waitzkin said, that's exactly what I do. It turns out that the process of learning is pretty much the same for every skill, and if you can do it for one thing, then you can do it for anything. So how do you get really, really good at learning? Well, Waitzkin wrote a book breaking down his process called The Art of Learning. According to Waitzkin, learning is mostly psychological. It's about being willing to push yourself outside your comfort zone, it's about having a mindset that you can get better, and it's about putting yourself in the right state of mind when you're competing. The thing that separates people who become really, really good at something from people who are just okay or average or bad is the people who are really, really good have the right mindset. So what does that mindset look like? One time Josh went to a chess exhibition in Arizona and the guy who picked him up from the airport bragged about how his son had not lost a chess game in over a year. And Josh knew immediately that that kid must be a really bad chess player. That's because that kid was only playing against players he could beat, meaning he never had to get better. Meanwhile, Josh, when he was playing chess, and especially when he was studying Tai Chi, would routinely seek out opponents who were much, much better than him and get his ass kicked repeatedly by them so that he could learn what they knew and so he could start playing like them and get better. Waitzkin says that when you're learning, you're a little bit like a hermit crab. Hermit crabs, if you don't know, they have this, these shells, and then as they get bigger, they outgrow their shells and they have to get rid of their shells and look for a new shell. And they're really vulnerable while they're looking for a new shell because they're all soft, but there's no other way to grow, right? If you just stay in the same shell forever, then you'll stay super small. And learning's the same way. If you want to get better at something, then you have to try to get to the next level. And that means going through a period of serious discomfort. Waitzkin talks about some psychological studies that have shown that there are two types of people when it comes to learning. There are people with fixed mindsets who view mistakes as reflections of them, and you know if they make a mistake or if they lose a game, then they're bad. There are also people with growth mindsets. If you have a growth mindset, it basically means that when you make a mistake, you don't see it as like, oh, I'm such a failure, I'm so horrible, yada, yada, yada. You just say it as, oh, I'm not good enough right now, I need to get better. Or, you know, I did this wrong, but next time I'm going to do it this way. Needless to say, if you have a growth mindset, you'll learn way better. Nobody likes making mistakes, nobody likes losing, but when you see them as just another part of the learning process, they're a lot easier to swallow. Waitzkin's mom is a horse trainer, and she says there are two ways to train a horse, right? The first way is you make the horse really scared. You bang a bunch of pots and pans and put it in a dark room and create all these loud noises. And then the horse is really scared and it does what you want it to. And the second way is to make the horse love you. If you are really nice to the horse and you develop a bond with the horse, then when you get on the horse, the horse will want to take you to where you want to go. Waitzkin uses this as a metaphor for two chess coaches he had late in his career. One of them wanted him to model his game after the Russian grandmaster Anatoly Karpov, who played a really suffocating style of chess, which was very defensive. And that's not what Josh's game was. Josh was naturally an attacking player. The other coach felt that, you know, Josh could learn some stuff from Karpov, but if he wanted to get better at chess, he had to embrace his natural style. Trying to play like Karpov discouraged Josh, and it might be one of the reasons why he decided to quit chess. He says that if you're not acting in a way that's authentic to yourself while you're learning, then you're not going to have fun, you're going to get discouraged, and you're going to want to quit. Obviously, this is a delicate balance because you do need to expose yourself to new ideas when you're learning, and you do need to step outside your comfort zone, and you do need to get better at stuff that you're not good at. But if you go overboard with this and you try and become something you're not, it's just not going to work. Instead, you have to merge the new ideas with stuff that you're already good at in a way that's authentic to your style. Psychologists did this study one time where they asked a bunch of chess players to remember a chess position on a chessboard, and they found that the, the really experienced chess players could remember the chess positions better than the non-experienced chess players. Why? Well, it's because experienced chess players don't see pieces, they see relationships between pieces, right? So a, no a novice chess player might see like, oh, there's a pawn there, there's a bishop there, there's rook there. 
An experienced chess player is going to say, the pawn threatens these two squares, which you know could attack the bishop, and the bishop is attacking this knight, and the knight is defending the rook, and the rook is attacking the queen, and the king is over there. It's safe because it's behind all these pawns. They don't see the pieces, they see the collection of pieces and how they relate to one another. That means they can see more pieces and remember where they are without burdening their short-term memory as much. Beginner chess players don't do this because they don't know how to do this, right? It would require so much conscious effort to see all these things because they've never seen these relationships before. Whereas for the experienced chess players, they've seen it a zillion times, it's unconscious for them. The same goes for international masters versus grandmasters, right? The stuff that international masters are working really, really hard to get good at is the stuff that grandmasters can do in their sleep. Waitzkin says that the process of learning any skill is just making more and more of the things that you need to do to do that skill well unconscious. If you do something enough times, then your brain will just start doing it without you thinking about it, and that frees up your consciousness to think about something else. In order to get to this point though, you have to practice something over and over and over again. When Josh competed in the Tai Chi Chuan Push Hands World Championships in Taiwan, the referees and the judges and basically all the people at the tournament wanted the Taiwanese people to win because it was like a matter of national pride for them. And so they were blatantly unfair to every foreign competitor. So when Josh went up against Taiwanese competitors, the refs would constantly refuse to call points that he had won. Um, and in the finals match, they actually extended the round against him to give his opponent more time to come back. And the same thing happened when he played chess. There was this Russian guy he used to play against, for example, who one time kicked him under the table. Um, he would often, in the middle of the game, go to his coach and talk about the chess position and, and decide what to do with his coach, which is blatantly illegal. Most people get mad when they see this stuff. They're like, this is unfair, and then they get into a state of mind where they make bad decisions, and then they lose. But Josh knows that the key to playing at a high level is to be laser focused, right? You have to be in the perfect state of mind, and if you're not in the perfect state of mind, then you're going to get destroyed. Most people, if they were competing in a tournament and their opponent blatantly cheated right in front of them, they would get angry, and then they would throw them off their game, and then they would end up losing. But Josh learned to channel his anger and use it to drive him to compete even better. He's also learned how to take you know, any outside distraction that would normally throw him off his game, like a song stuck in his head or even an earthquake one time, and use it to help him focus more intensely. If you're going to win at any high level competition, you have to be laser focused. And Josh has spent his entire life figuring out ways to get more and more laser focused. So if you want to do really, really well at something, figure out how to get in your zone. And this doesn't just apply to competition, right? There was this one guy who Josh helped to get in the zone because he needed help delivering presentations at work. And so he got, you know, Josh helped him build this routine where you know, he would do, he would drink something and then meditate before he played catch with his son, which was an activity where he was always you know, locked in and he, he really focused on it. And then every time he did that routine, he would immediately go into the, the focus zone. And so he would start doing the routine before a sales presentation. So if you want to get better at something, think about ways that you can put yourself in the state of mind that you need to be in to do it really well. If you can do that, and if you can follow the rest of Josh's recipe, then you can get really, really good at basically whatever you want. So thanks so much for watching Theo's Book Club. Uh, if you're new around here, my name's Theo. I make brief videos like this one about the books that I read, breaking down the big ideas so that you can learn everything that I learned and so you can decide, do I want to read this book for myself? If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll do me a big favor, hit that like button right down there. That tells YouTube, hey, this is a good video, we should show it to more people. You're also welcome to leave a comment if there was something that I said that inspired you or gave you some profound insight, or if I got something wrong and you want to correct me. And finally, if you want to see more of these book review videos pop up in your feed, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, have a great day, and whatever you do, keep getting better at it.